what's up you guys welcome back to mo money's channel i'm coming to you guys from my jail cell aka my house because you know we're on quarantine right now so we can't go anywhere but anyways so for today i'm bringing you guys another recipe so this recipe it's actually kind of funny how i came across it um i was kind of lit I was on Instagram and I follow this Mexican meme page. They posted this video of this lady making this recipe. I'm gonna put her Instagram name in the description box in case you guys wanna hit the follow button. And the lady's name is Chamoyada underscore the Tia Juana. Um, so I'm gonna put it in the description box if you guys wanna hit the follow button. So shout out to La Senora. For posting this recipe and that shit, I don't know, like I was lit, but that looks so good. So let me tell you guys what you guys are gonna need. Butter, onion, cilantro, Mexican style cheese, sour cream, avocados, it's part of the condiments, but if you guys don't like avocados and you guys don't have to add it, I personally love avocados. So I eat it with damn near everything. For the meat, I got carne asada um, already marinated. And then I had the carnicero, the meat market guy. Um, I had him chop it up for me, like to eat tacos. Um, so you guys could buy a whole and season it yourselves. Um, but just so that it was faster for me, I got it already marinated. And I had the uh, meat guy chop it up for me. I got about five pounds. The meat... All depends on how many people you're gonna cook for. I, I'm cooking for about 10 people today. Um, so this is how much meat I have. You're going to need garlic salt, black pepper, garlic powder, parsley. You're gonna need papas. I suggest that you buy the big ones. Um, these I had to buy them individually because um, the ones in like the packs are kind of small. Um, so make sure you guys get the big potatoes. I got about 8 or 10 because I'm feeding like 8 or 10 people. Um, so everyone needs to have their own papa. So before you do anything, you want to make sure you put a pot to boil. Once your water's boiling, then you throw in your potatoes. Alright guys, so before you throw in your potatoes to boil, make sure you rinse them. I already rinsed them. Um, and then now I threw them in here. So now we're just going to let them boil. I couldn't fit all my potatoes in this pot, so I had to boil some extra water for the rest. Um, so my papas are done now. I let them cook for about 30 minutes. Um, but honestly, when you all you gotta do is just poke them with the with the fork, and then you'll know if it's done or not. You don't want to overcook them though, just because you don't want them to get mushy and stuff and lose their shape. So now that this is done, I turn, I'm going to start putting my meat on to cook. Alright guys, so I'm cooking the carne still. So I'm letting that cook for now. And then I also wanted to, in case you guys don't have a salsa recipe, I'm going to throw this one in real quick. This is my mom's recipe. Um... So if you're using a big tomato, I suggest you only use one. But if you're using the small ones, uh, like the the Roma tomatoes, then I suggest you use two. And then you're gonna need some tomatillos. I'm using I'm using like about eight. Again, the amount kind of depends on how much salsa you're gonna make. Um, so if you're gonna make if you want if you want to make a lot of salsa obviously you would use more tomatoes and more tomatillos but i'm just gonna make some for the week so this should be good for a week i'm gonna put three garlic cloves also you guys um if you're so basically what i'm using is a comal on top of the comal i use this foil basically it just kind of helps it from sticking on the actual comal um and this is so much easier especially when you're washing the dishes um the rest the key to the the key to this salsa is to cook the tomatoes and also get and also burn it because basically the burnt part is going to give the salsa a really good flavor um you don't want to overcook the tomatoes though i have it on really low fire just so you guys kind of get an idea 
So once I flip these over and they're when they're about halfway done, then I'm gonna throw in my chile de árbol. So basically, this is chile de árbol. When you're looking for it in the store, a lot of brands make it, but this is what my bag looks like. And these are already toasted, but I like to toast them more just because, like how I said, the burnt the burnt part gives it a really good flavor. But we don't want to over burn them, so I'm going to throw them in when these are almost done. Alright guys, so now that my papa's done, what we're going to do first is we're going to cut an oval on the top of it. And when you're cutting down, make sure you don't go all the way to the bottom. You just want to cut at the top. So now we're going to scoop out the oval that we just cut out. Once you take off the top, you want to scoop out the inside. So you just want to scoop the middle part out. Alright guys, and this is what the inside of my papa looks like. You see how I, I gutted it? I mostly took the inside out, but it's still sturdy. So you don't want to make it... You don't want to gut it out where it's super, super flimsy. All right, guys, and this is what my tomatoes and my tomatillos look like. So I don't know if you could see, but it's already about to right here. So I'm going to flip it over now. Okay, so you see how it's nice and burnt? This is exactly how you want it. All right, guys, my tomatoes um, and my tomatillos are almost done. So now that they're almost done, I'm going to add my chile de árbol. So the chile, you guys, just depends on how spicy you want it. I don't usually count my chiles. I just grab a handful and throw them in. So if you're a beginner at making salsa, what I suggest is that you just, you throw a couple of them to toast. Um, and then once you start making your salsa, you can throw in the chiles little by little and that way you can get the hang of how spicy you want it. So I'm going to let these toast for about three, two to three minutes. You don't want to do two to, you don't want to do no more than two to three minutes. Alright guys, so my tomatillos are now done. So I'm going to start taking them out. Your chiles should be nice and burnt like that. So now we're going to start taking them out. Also take out the garlic, they're ready. Alright guys, so this is the butter that I'm going to use. I softened it up a little bit. I just smashed it up a little bit. These are the half sticks. I used three of these. This is the papa that I took from inside of the potato. Um, so basically, I already smashed it up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my butter. And you don't have to use this much butter if you don't want to. It's just whatever your preference is. So now I'm just going to smash it up together. Okay, so now that my butter and my potatoes are smashed in together, I'm going to start adding the seasoning salt. I'm going to start out with parsley. I'm only going to throw in about that much. I'm not going to add too much parsley. Now I'm going to throw in the pepper. I'm going to throw in the garlic salt. I'm going to add the garlic powder. Now I'm just going to mix my ingredients together. So I hadn't realized she actually put the foil paper on before she started gutting them out. So that's a quick tip. Um, but I already gutted them out so um, I just have to wrap them up like this. Once my papa is wrapped, I'm going to get some of our potatoes with butter that we made earlier. And I'm going to put a layer of it back inside the papa. So I put about this much because I want to leave room for the meat. Once I put the potatoes with butter inside of my papa, I'm going to add cheese. So I'm going to put some cheese in the middle. 
And again, you don't want to overstuff it because you still need to make room for your meat. So I added about that much. See how there's still room? So now I'm going to put some of my meat on the top. Okay, you guys, so once I put my meat, now I'm going to put a little more of the potato on top. So I put about that much. Now I'm going to add cheese again. And this is what my papa looks like. And we're going to do this to all the papas, you guys. This is my papas, and they're ready to go in the oven. The lady said to put the papas inside the oven, but she didn't say like how high. Um, she only said to leave them in for 15 minutes. So I put my oven to like 325. So I'm just gonna try that, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it. But the purpose of the papas going in the oven is to basically melt the cheese. So it's kind of like the papa version of a lasagna, I guess. But all right, guys, so let's put it in the oven. I'm already so excited to try this. Now that I have my tomatoes, my tomatillos, and my chile, my garlic in here, now I'm going to add water. So I always add as I go. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use consomme. Um, this is chicken bouillon for those of you guys who speak English. And then this is salt. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of both. And you guys, um, the salt, basically you're going to use as much as you want. So you're going to keep tasting it. And if you feel like it needs more salt, then you add as you go. I usually start with maybe, I'm doing about half a tablespoon. And I'm going to start with about that much salt. Alright guys, so I'm add a little more salt. I'm add about that much. And I'm going to add a little bit of bouillon too. I'm only going to use about that much. Alright guys, so my salsa is done. Um, I put it in this little container. This is what they should look like. You see the cheese is nice and melted. So first I'm going to add aguacate. You can make it into guacamole. I'm going to put a little bit of cilantro. Now I'm going to put a little bit of onion. I'm going to put sour cream. All right, you guys, and this is my papa. Look at how fucking fire this looks. I got to get different angles so you guys know how serious this is. All right, guys, so today's fetish bite is a little different. So instead of me doing the fetish bite today, these are my three guinea pigs. And most torturing us. Yeah, because I wanted to go buy already. Cause Wait. We Wait. And we started yeah, so they like kept, yeah. My mouth is getting watery. Wait. I feel like that treadmill and you're like. Okay, you guys all got to try it at the same time. Okay. So. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh-huh. Mmm. 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 Fire. Dang, that shit just hit me in my face. Fire, you guys. Mm. Fire? Fire. Mm. Mm. Not even because you're our tia. And this is the first time they taste it, you guys. So, yeah, we're most guinea So, should we add this to the menu? Yes. yes. Alright. My fetish bite freaks got three extra fetish bites today. So, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Alright, guys, and that completes today's video. I hope you guys like the recipe. Shout out to Chamoyada de Tia Juana. Um, thank you so much for the re recipe. Muchas gracias por la receta, señora. Uh, she's a Spanish speaker, so if by any chance she watches this, muchas gracias por la receta, señora. Don't forget to follow la Tia Juana. I'm going to put her um, Instagram name in the description box. If you guys make the recipe, send me the video, send me the pictures. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for watching Mo Money's channel.